Hello friends, so today we are back with another topic and this is very useful and interesting topic for the runners. So running is a sport or is a, is a fitness activity which is now very popular and there are people across the world who indulge in regular running and this is for fitness as well as you know many people run uh, for competitions also. And there are anecdotal case reports or cases that we hear where a runner, supposedly healthy runner who has been running for years together, suddenly he collapses and has a cardiac arrest or dies also. And this puts lots of fear in the people who are running on a regular basis as well as new people or people who want to take up running on a fresh basis. So today in this episode we are going to discuss about certain facts or the research regarding sudden cardiac arrests or deaths that have happened in the past. Because this is a topic of interest for the past several decades ever since running became popular and in the last decade or so running has become popular and millions of people across the world uh, they take part in long distance running including marathons. So first uh, important topic is wow, what is the incidence or how common is death or cardiac arrest during long distance running. So based on the data which is published it is not common. So when I say it is not common, the highest it is one death out of 50,000 marathon runners and it goes up to one out of 1 1.5 lakhs that is 150,000 runners. So that is the kind of incidence we are talking about which is much lesser than the incidence among the normal population but of course here we are talking about an activity and uh, but this is some figure we need to remember. The second thing is, is there a difference between male runners and the female runners? The answer is yes. The risk of death is almost three to six times higher among the male runners. So if you look at the incidence, it is about 0.9 to 1 deaths for every 1 lakh of marathon runners. And that same figure among the women, it is 0 0.16 to 0 0.4 out of every 1 lakh or 100,000 women runners. So the risk is higher among women. Is there any age group where it is more common? So if you look at the profile of runners who collapsed and died during the marathon events, it ranges from very young, like say in teenager and 20s up to older age. So no age is exempt, but it is slightly more common in runners who are 40 plus. And then the one, the next topic is quite important and very, very useful. So in that we look at the distance. And uh, is there a link between the distance run and the risk of death which happened during the marathon events? So there is a very clear cut link or what we find is that longer the distance, greater are the chances of death. In the first 10 kilometers or there are 10 kilometers events where almost no one has had a cardiac arrest, very few, very rare. But and if you look at the same thing for a half marathon, it increases, it is about 0.27 for every 100,000 or 1 lakh of runners and the same risk becomes 1 for full marathon. So what we can say is that the risk of having a cardiac arrest is almost 4 times higher during a full marathon as compared to half marathon and it is negligible for a distance of 10 kilometers and there is one more study we are looking at 10 milers that is 16 kilometers which is slightly you know lesser than definitely lesser than the half marathon distance. So there is a clear cut link, longer the distance of the running event, greater are the chances of cardiac arrest and death. And in the marathon also if you look at, you know, when these unfortunate incidents or events happen, it is usually in the last quarter. So if you divide this full marathon of 42 kilometers into four parts, so the last quarter which is from the 32nd to the 41st kilometer, that is when most of the events happen. So there is a clear cut link. So in the first quarter and the second and the third quarter, the deaths are very less. It is usually in the last quarter. And same thing happens for the half marathons. Few incidents have happened and that is towards as the runner is about to complete the race or about to finish, finish the race. And then it brings to the next topic. So what are the common causes that lead to cardiac arrest or death in these so-called healthy individuals? These are so-called healthy individuals because either they do not have any symptoms prior to the runs or they may have had milder symptoms which they have often ignored. So in that, the, based on the data what is published, 
and few autopsy studies also are there. Number one cause found was HOCM, which is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. It's usually a congenital disease and it can be easily diagnosed with the help of echocardiogram. But since many runners do not have any symptoms or they have symptoms like palpitations and breathlessness, chest pain, which they often ignore. So it remains undiagnosed. And unfortunately, the during the runs, they have a, let's say, a rhythm disturbance and cardiac arrest. The second most common cause identified is what is called as atherosclerotic disease of the coronary arteries where the arteries have a plaque or blockage or clot and then obviously it cannot happen during the running. It has been happening for the last few weeks or months and then that results into myocardial infarction or heart attack during the event. So that is the second most common cause and thirdly it is just arrhythmias which can happen in young people. Uh, with overexertion or the strain of long distance running. So that's the third cause. So these are the three most common causes which lead to cardiac arrest during long distance running. Are there any factors that increase the risk? So definitely it is fatigue or too much of heat or exhaustion or if there is air pollution, if the runner is under hydrated or over hydrated or if the runner has electrolyte imbalance like low sodium or high sodium, what is known as hyponatremia or hyponatremia. Any of these events or you know these uh, situations in a person who is already predisposed uh, can push the person to get cardiac arrest uh, like unfortunate event. And also this can happen in a runner, let's say who is uh, supposed to or used to running a run at a specific pace. But you know many runners want to put in their best and go for the personal best. And if it is done, you know, too much, which is beyond their, say, capacity or their limits, that can also push some of the runners into this kind of unfortunate situation. So running at a much greater pace than one is, one has trained for or one is used to. So that also can push. So that also brings us to, you know, what are the ways where one can minimize the risk or reduce the risk? Is there any safe uh, distance? So obviously if somebody is planning to run a marathon, it is not like you know you just take part in a marathon uh, for showing off that I have run a marathon. It needs proper training and uh, so unless some runner has trained properly, one should not go. Second thing is many times there will be some kind of pre-monetary symptoms like you know which should not be ignored. So in that it could be uh, fatigue while running or just feeling out of breath while running, any kind of pain in the chest especially in the center which radiates to left arm or any kind of palpitations or feeling one's own heartbeat uncomfortably. So if any of these symptoms come don't ignore. Meet a cardiologist and have a proper heart checkup because health is more important than you know if once you are healthy you can definitely run. Even those who are so called healthy if you are going for a run like full marathon or even a half marathon which is not an easy thing you know it may look easy but one need to be physically fit. So get the basic heart test like ECG, echocardiogram and treadmill test done because that is the only way to identify some of the defects like HOCM which I just mentioned. Even this coronary artery disease may not have any symptoms unless one pushes himself or herself to this extreme kind of uh, exercise limit. Uh, it may not, symptoms may not be obvious. So prefer, these checkups are definitely useful. Get your blood pressure checked. Uh, get your sugars checked, cholesterol checked because man, these diseases may not have any symptoms. Unless you check, you may not be able to find out that one is suffering from these diseases. So these kind of preventive checks are required for almost all the runners before they take up long distance running. And uh, then the question of training comes. There is, uh, you know, there is no denying that one has to train. So if somebody is planning to run say a marathon, minimum 40 kilometers of running is required in a, in a week. And uh, if it is under guidance, it is even better. So that kind of training is required. The fitness regime, the diet, hydration, all those things are important during training, on the day of run, the one day prior to the run. So these things are important. And then as I already mentioned that this routine checkups are also useful. So having uh, said this, you know, so one is that, you know, not everyone uh, should aim to run a marathon. So if one, one is not fit enough or one doesn't have the abilities, then uh, you should not start straight away with the marathon, start with shorter distances and then gradually you can scale up the distances. Second thing is 
for if you are running for health let's say you know the most of us run for good health so there is no need to run such long distances just 25 kilometers in a week which is 5 kilometers of running 5 days in a week that is more than enough in any case uh, you know as the number of uh, kilometers keep increasing the risk also increases there is no one figure which has been which can be put as safe or unsafe but generally say you know 40 kilometers is also reasonably safe in a week the highest may be around say 40 miles that comes to 64 kilometers which could be safe for most of us uh, there could be exceptions but you know if somebody is able to run 80 or 100 kilometers and he is fit and healthy doesn't mean that everybody will be like, in like that because if you look at anything uh, there is a you know curve where 5% are like they can't even run 2 or 3 kilometers so only 5% can run much longer distances and they can remain healthy but most of us fall in the 90% who are average so aim for average distance which is about 25 to let's say 50 kilometers in a week and try not to exceed that kind of limit and second thing is running at a reasonably you know good heart rate so if the heart rate is very high also it's not good in the long run so if you are running try to achieve about say 85% at the most so 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate where maximum heart rate easy formula is 220 minus age i know there are other formula also but use any one formula and not extra not to exceed 85% of that which means also you should not try to hit your best pace on every day of running go for your best pace maybe once in a week other days go for slow or moderately slower runs which could be again about 75 to 80% of your maximum pace and uh, and on the events day also try to do what you have been doing every day not try to do some heroic efforts and go for some miracle because that can be catastrophic so i hope uh, you know today's episode was useful you learned something new and if you have then like this video share it and post your comments and queries i'll be happy to answer them and also subscribe to my channel to watch more similar videos in the future